<laughs> Ray McKinnon, you're a clown. Okay, all right, so Wayne, you can hear me now, all right? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Well, I can hear me too, so... Uh... Hey, Joe. I'm not sure what the the issue is, but uh, while I have you, okay. So, all right. So it says that Ray is here. All right. This doesn't work. Then Ray and I will get uh, get together offline and. Um... Jeez. <laughs> Okay, you tell me, that's much better. You got me, I, I can see you, and I, I guess you can see me. Yeah, I can see you. And that, that okay. face of yours, that face of yours is worth waiting for. Right, it looked like it's on a poison bottle. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so let me do the, uh, let me do the official uh, opening. Yeah. Now I think it might be um it might be my internet connection here. Anyhow, everybody uh this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kundo Rebel. Welcome to episode number ten of the Jeet Kundo Dialogues. My guest today is um he's he's what I call a, a real Jeet Kundo old timer. And he's also a true pioneer in the Jeet Kundo world. Um Ray, you've been around since the nineteen seventies, correct? Correct. I started at the Kali Academy on Torrance, you know, in Torrance on Normandy Street with, with Dan you and were, Richard on the school. You were living in, in California at the time or you were going back and forth? I was going back and forth. I would stay for like two months at a time, a month, three months, whatever I could do and forward. Okay. Ah, Okay, so how how did that happen? How like what like your first trip out to California came about because of what? Because I I was one of my Wing Chun instructors when he moved back to Stockton, I wanted to train in Bruce's arts, in Bruce's art. Well, he goes, the best thing you can do okay. is find one of Bruce Lee's students. So I went to the Black Belt magazines and everything because there wasn't the internet in <laughs> seventy. Because I don't teach people publicly. I don't do it. I got some students in my basement at my grocery uh -huh. store. But he goes, there's a guy in California named Danny Santo. And of course, I didn't know who he was at the time. I said, oh, well, right. does he teach public? He goes, yeah. So he gave me his number. And the first time I met him, I went up there. And all because I called and he said, "Well, I'll be there, in, you know, so and so day." I forgot it was a Thursday, I think. But anyway, he drove up and he seen me sitting there. And uh -huh. He goes, "Can I help you?" And I told him who I was. He goes, "Well, I see you made it all the way from Dallas." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, I'm I'm totally convinced to do it." So <laughs> he he called me private. Okay. Into the, the classes too, so I was really lucky, and I got to train with Dan and Richard, 
I mean, you know, seafood Dan yeah. and seafood Richard, and and of course, you know, Chris Kent was there, Cass and Paul Bunak, everybody was there. I was just like in hog heaven. Yeah, all right, with everybody. Yeah. So um, that's basically so how that, I got so started. Then Right, and how, 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 so then the idea, when, when, when did the instructor thing come about? How long after that? Oh, okay, it took me, I started in 79 with Dan. And, right. And I was Seafood Dan and Seafood Richard at the school. Dan gave me his um, teaching, my teaching in uh It's where, okay. you know, say the Kali Academy and the John Fong Gong Fu Academy oh. of Los Angeles. And it was dated in 19, March of 1985. And of course, then Richard certified okay. me. And, and I've been certified. I'm certified from Dan, Larry, Richard, Chai. Got permission to teach right. from Victor's uh, slot. So, you know, a lot of things. But I got my first certificate uh, instructor level from Dan in 85. Okay. And I was just. Lucky. So, but, bef Very but before that, you were, t you were teaching or studying Wing Chun? Were you teaching? I was teaching. I was training in Wing Chun from a guy named Toy. His last name was Toy, T-O-Y. Okay. And he had no school. He just taught out of his house. Uh-huh. And, and then when he moved, I wanted to train. Just keep training. I right. didn't want to do Taekwondo no more. Taekwondo is a great art. It just that uh, I wanted to do, you know, Bruce's stuff. Yeah. So he goes, best thing you can do, just look for some, you know, go into magazines, whatever you can do to find them. So that's how I got started. And of course, I, my first art was judo. Okay. And then I did Taekwondo. Then I went to Wing Chun. Then I went to Dan and uh, Richard uh, and everybody else, and Larry. And, yeah. And everybody. Um, so when, when, the, when uh, in 1984, when the Kali Academy closed and they opened up the island, right. were, were you, still, right. you still traveling? I was going back and forth, yes, sir. And yeah. then when, you know, he went to the IMB Academy with, you know, Martinez helped Dan and, and Richard open the IMB Academy. Right. Because you know, the IMB stood for Insanto Martinez Bastillo. Right. And, but at that time, right. um, Sifu Dan had, he had the, the Marina Del Rey school also, right? The Marina Del Rey school, uh, he had two schools. Right. The Kali Academy for a little bit and then IMB. Then he shut down the, the Kali Academy and just had IMB. I don't think the Marina school, if I ain't wrong, it didn't come into effect until after, um, oh God, I won't say in the 90s. Oh, not for, really? I don't recall that for exactly the date. Yeah, because something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, did you ever? Did you ever? Like, did you ever get too busy to keep traveling back and forth? Or I got to the point where I had Dan and Richard and everybody coming to Dallas. Ah. Okay. I was the first one to bring Dan for a seminar in Dallas, but of course. People said, well, was he already, you know, he was coming here before that for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. He trained them, and that's how I got involved with the Cowboys. Because Coach uh, Bob Ward was a student at the Collie Academy, like I was. And he right. was the conditioning coach for the Cowboys. And he's the one that came up with this idea about using martial arts in football. And, and I got lucky, and Bob, you know, Coach Ward had me to help from 82 to 88 to they sold them. To the okay. Cowboys was so, and I still train players, not just Dallas Cowboys. I train <laughs> Rams. I got a lot of different players I train. Right, you know? and, and it's essentially. Um, I, I know that in the in in the early days, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was the the Muay Thai influence. Uh, oh with, yeah, with Chai the, was uh, Chai was yeah. one of them that helped the Cowboys. Uh huh. And then there was also um, like the who bud and the sensitivity drills and what have you. Absolutely. That's where the hand drills are. People, when they hear about, oh, well, you're going to teach martial arts to football players, they can't punch and kick nobody. <laughs> it ain't so much that. Right. It's the who bud, 
the bong lock, the pushing hands, all of those sensitivity drills and energy drills, yeah. that's what's applied. And yeah. we got what we call two drills that we call them quick hands. And uh -huh. those, you know, from the very beginning, it's a three and four count. You okay. know, like when you, it's kind of hard to tell you, you know, but if you see my hands, yeah, you're pairing hand, you're like routine, and you come back, and that's yeah. four. Yeah. One, two, three, four off the line to touch the shoulders then you you can go back and forth and then you do like randy white i still work with him we teach you know football camps and stuff so he loves this stuff him yeah. and harvey was the two wild ones back and in where, the day where's coach ward these days he is he's in mckin i, I, I won't say mckinney texas i see him every once in a while i can tell <laughs> you a story if you want to hear a story about me and Coach Ward, we was at Buffalo Wings. If you know, it's a restaurant. Uh -huh. And that was, it happened about a year ago. And if you look at George, I mean, look at uh, Coach Ward, he looks kind of like George Bush. Kind of. Yeah. You know? So we was at a restaurant and the waiter come over and thought he was George Bush. <laughs> and he goes, oh, sir, it's so great to meet you. And, you know, and of course, you know, Bob, well, oh, yeah, I'm George Bush. Of course I am. <laughs> and all this. So he kept that waiter going for a while, and I just started laughing. I said, I looked over at the guy and said, hey, buddy, he is not George Bush. <laughs> He's the former conditioning coach for the Cowboys. And this guy went, yeah, right. <laughs> and he didn't even believe anything. So that was kind of funny. Coach Ward is always playing jokes and stuff. Yeah. So – He's a great guy. And he's 85 years old. Oh, my God. And he, uh, his brother went to school with Dan in college. Oh, really? Sifu Dan. Okay. Yeah. And Sifu Dan looked up to Bob because Bob was two years older than he was. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. How, that, you know, that was Dan's, Sifu Dan's mentor at one time was Coach Ward. Right. And then he, Coach Ward became a student under Dan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of funny how that works. And you know, so. yeah. And um, so, so when, what about, um, let's go to the eighties. So you get, okay. your, you get your certificate in 1985. When did you? 85, open? March. I think it was March of 85. I, w I don't have it in front of me, but I think okay. it's March of 85. And, so, and Terry so, Gibson got his right after mine. If you know who Terry Gibson was. Yeah. Yeah. I got mine yeah. in, I got mine in um, September or October of '85. So what? Uh, so let me ask you, what what was your certificate look like? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I Does it say? You know, some of them after '85 or around '85, because Dan, simple Dan, told me this is only only got this one and Terry getting the same thing you're getting, and he uh -huh. say the Collie Academy. Now after that, they say the Santo Academy. Right. Yeah. I so think, I don't know exactly. Yeah. I I'd, I'd have to I'd have to pull them out of storage or or, or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, would, I would have to go find mine off the wall. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, but you know a lot of people don't realize that Dallas and Fort Worth, the whole top part of Texas, or just a lot of Texas, I'm the one that brought Dan, Larry, Richard, mm -hmm. Chai. Everybody, and they didn't even know what, you know, a lot of things. Taekwondo is a real big art here in Dallas, oh, yeah. in Texas. Yeah. And, uh, and they didn't even know what, you know, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do was or, you know, hey, stuff let, like that. So it's kind of funny. Let me throw out a Texas Taekwondo name, and you tell me if you know it. Ishmael Robles. Robles. His name rings a bell. Okay. My, the people I knew back in the old day was Alan Steen. Uh-huh. Roy Truman, all these is, you know, yeah. like Alan Steen fought Chuck Norris, yeah. in, you know, back when there was point tournaments. Yeah. And uh, Roy, for the championship and stuff. Roy Kerbin had a book on Taekwondo printed by the, the people from Black Belt. I remember him. Right. 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 He's yeah. a good guy. I mean, I met him, you know. Roy, I, didn't, I don't really know him that well. I just met him once. So yeah. I know who he is. Yeah, I remember. I remember reading, reading, you know, as as a kid in Barbados, reading about those, those taekwondo, those Texas taekwondo bruisers. 
they had their little groups. They, Demetrius Avanis uh -huh. was a real yep. tough cookie. Yeah. He died in a plane crash. Right. And, and uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name that fought Chuck Norris too. And he, you end up being a fireman, a fire chief for Garland, Texas. And I'm, I can't think of his name. Yeah, and all, but anyway, that, you know, yeah, my, I'm I'm over sixty, so my memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess well, I've been hitting the head too much. <laughs> so when when did um, when did Crow's martial art open up? Okay, it started right at in by eighty six because from eighty from by eighty two to eighty five, it was Wing Chun Academy is what I called it. Okay. And of course, I taught more than just, you know, I taught every, I taught, you know, uh, a few different things, not just Wing Chun by itself. But right. after Dan certified me in 85, uh -huh. I named it kind of Crow's Martial Arts. Okay. After me and, <laughs> and all that. But yeah, it was around 85. I want to say 85, 86, something okay. like that. When, um, when is, is, well, I take it that now it's a, it's, how long has it been a full time gig? Mine's been a, a full-time game for about the last three, four years. Okay. Because I, you know, I've done the house building. I, I worked. I was a contractor for uh, a Frito Lay for a lot of years. Okay. And uh, I, I was a contractor for them, and so you know, I've done a lot of different things. Maintenance back in my old days when in, in the seventies, so yeah. I did everything for maintenance, and I've done security work. And on, I was in the army for a little bit, so okay, you know, so so I I've been bouncing, right? Okay, so this so the school was was kind of like um, uh, so you had you had you had the the regular job or the real job, and then the school was like a hobby thing. Yeah, the hobby. I mean, the school was just like a a hobby or just like extra money, if you want to call it that. Yeah. It okay. wasn't like my eight to five job or it ain't no such thing as eight to five in martial arts, but right. You know, um, a full time, a full time job. No. Okay. So just by, by four years ago, something right. like that. So as, as somebody who was there, um, you know, at the end of the seventies before like the seminar circuit started, right? Yeah. Are you talking about for people I knew that was around yeah, before no, the what my my question is like, what, did you did you feel when the interest started to grow in the night in the nineteen eighties? The interest grew. Oh yeah, in the eighties it started growing, and of course, Sifu Dan and Sifu Richard and everybody else. That's when the seminars people start asking them, asking yeah. them for them in the eighties, and by the time. I want to say, I had Dan down, I think, 82 or 83. I think it was 83 the first time. Okay. And, and you know, and it had a decent turnout. After uh -huh. that, you know, the second time it was like, you know, I think I had 60 people, 70, and that was a lot of people back then. So in his seminar. And I was yeah. in a building that, you know, a lot of them was outside. <laughs> and Dan, right. and Super Dan would have to walk in and out. <laughs> To, you know, because we had so many. But, you know, I want to say around 83, I guess, is when to me that when Texas, after I brought down that uh, seafood down the first time, that's when it exploded to mm -hmm. me in Texas. Now, other places like New York, that's a different thing. Yeah. And California and, and you know, like where you're at, yeah. Florida and all that, it has their own timetable. But that's what I'm looking at in and I think the seminar bracket, that's when I think it kind of expanded and really grew. And mm -hmm. you got, I, I see a big benefit because some people would never be able to train with people like Sifu Dan and them. Right. If it wasn't for a seminar. Right. Yes. You know, yep. people, you know, I was like me, I was real lucky to go back and forth because my grandmother, <laughs> she owned a nursing home, owned a bunch, she was, you know, well off. She owned apartment houses and she owned, she was the one helping me 
go back and forth. Okay. Where I can stay there for two or three months at a time, then come back home, then go back for another oh. month, two months, whatever I did. I, I was averaging a couple, two to three times a year going back to California okay. for a few years. Then it got to where it was a little slower. Yeah. Then by 83, I think it was, I had, I asked Dan to come down. Got and it. it was more feasible then. And of course he did and all that. Okay. So I was taking a look at um, at your website, right? Yes, sir. Um, okay, so we have we have the Jeet Kune Do background. So now tell me tell me about your Filipino martial arts background. Okay, my Filipino martial arts background is is more influence off of, of course Sifu Dan, Sifu Richard, Sifu Larry Hartsell, and uh -huh. Lindsay Lagusa. How did that come about? That's where I was headed with this. Sifu Bastilo gave me the ideal. Sifu Bastilo saying, you know, he had Lindsay, he had Guru Lindsay at one of his uh, instructor camps at his school. Okay. And, and of course, you know, Grandmaster Lagusa, Ben, Ben Lagusa, you know, he didn't really do much anymore. Right. But, you know, his sons and all. So I asked, I got a hold of Lindsay, called him, he was in Vegas. He lived in Vegas. Uh -huh. He passed away now. He's gone. Oh, that's the saddest thing in the world. Yeah, he was one of my best friends, but and teachers. But he uh, he said, "Well, you know, you can come up here." So me and my wife flew to Vegas. Uh huh. And uh, and he was telling me a story. I don't know if you heard this. You know how Dan was watching. Sifu Dan was watching one of the Lagusa's demos, and and. Lindsay stripped a stick with his feet. Yes. And, uh, and, and Dan thought that was one of the greatest things. Yeah. I, I was asking Lindsay about it. And Lindsay said, I'm glad that Dan got to see it because if he asked me to do it again, I could probably never do it again like yeah. that. Yeah. I've just, seen you know, I, like, I saw the video of that. Somebody's uh, internet cut out. All right, we'll give uh, we'll give Ray man in the middle of the Largusa story. Um, we'll give uh, Ray a few a few seconds to come back on. Get this going again. Yeah, me too. Uh, All right, let me see if I can let me see if I can fix his internet connection. Oh man. That sucks. He should be back. Technology guy, sorry. Sorry, I lost you for a second, Sifu Wood. That's all right. I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. I was like, I was like, man, in the middle of the Largusa story. Right. I'm so sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so after he did that, you know, he told me, he goes, Yeah, I told, you know, he said, I would never be able to do it again as smooth as that. Uh huh. And, uh, but you know how you get people, you teach people, sit on their back, you know, lay on their back and do the six count. You know how then you turn and all, but do it with your feet. Yes. And a lot of people say, well, you mean doing it with your feet. I said, first thing, you've got to be laying down. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but that coordinates your hands, I mean, your feet, just like yeah. you would your hands. But yeah, anyway, yeah. so yeah, he was really, he was just one... And he, he, you know, i tell you another thing that he told me. He was talking to Dana White, the UFC 
president, and he wanted him to look at a stick tournament, you know, like stick fighting, like the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. And Dana White, see, I agree, I look at it. Well, after he watched that, you know, Lindsay has some guys come over and they got kind of bloody because they was doing it with <laughs> the sticks and wasn't yeah. much helmets or anything. And Dana White went, no, I can't do that. No insurance company would touch this. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's what Wait, Lindsay had correct. in his yeah. mind okay. to do that. Yeah, stay there because, yeah, sometimes I can't see your face. All right, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm – how about that? You get it. You get excited talking about the Kali. Oh, I get. I, I, you know, I've been doing it since I. Oh God, I don't know since early. You know, in my teens, and I still get excited when I teach. I get excited. Excellent. So, Excellent. You know, okay. You know. So the Muay Thai background is is what the, from Chai. Uh, I got Chai. Okay, so you were introduced to him through Sifu Dan, well, probably. Absolutely. Okay. And then you started and, bringing him to Texas? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I started bringing him in, the, I think, 85, 86. Uh -huh. was my first was his first time to come down for me. Okay. And then he was coming down every year for me for a few years. I don't know, four or five years, something like that. Yeah. And right. then he, let, you know. Let, let me throw out another Texas name I just thought of. Jim okay. Buchanan. And what you was know, his name? Jim Buchanan. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, I think I know who it is. Cause, cause I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I know I've been to Dallas a couple of times for, you know, for Seafood Dan's seminar, but right. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was, it was at your place. Well, you know, there's, uh, oh, what's her name? Lori, not Lori, Dory. <laughs> He's got hose Dan for seminars now, and uh, okay. right outside of Fort Worth, and Jim okay. Buchanan. Yeah, Jim Buchanan and her. Yeah. Jim and her is the one that hosts. Okay. Dan. Yeah. yeah, I have to think for a second. Yeah. Because okay. I know, believe it or not, I know three Jim Buchanans. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to figure out which one you was talking yeah. about. So yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Penn Jack, see that background and history. Okay, my background is from Dan and from Victor Dictois, mainly. Ah, okay. That and is... of course now, you know, Guru uh, Dictois, he's gone. Right. He passed I... away. Oh, man. It's a shame. I know, it, it just, it's sad because Lindsay, you know, Guru Lindsay Lugusa passed away. Then, you know, of course, Sifu Bastillo passed away. And he right. was just here, yeah. right before he passed away. Wow! Right, uh, just a few months. Yeah, yeah. And, I uh, mean, you know, it, it. That's why, to me, it's it's important to keep the to keep the the lineage going because all these guys. I mean, even Sifu Larry is gone. And, yeah, and Sifu Heart Cell is gone. Yeah, you know? and you know, it. You have to. Some you know, people ask me. For example, why do I train? Why have I trained under so many of Bruce Lee's students, like Joseph Cowles, Jesse Glover, yeah. and people like that, plus Dan, Larry, and Richard? And I'm yeah. fortunate to be certified from Dan, Larry, and Richard. Yeah. But you know, people say, "Why did you do that?" I said, "Well, because Bruce taught every one of them individually different. They had their own specialty. Like Larry was his grappling, Richard okay. was uh, his boxing because he was a wine champ." at one time and of course dan is like dan is dan he can do anything <laughs> just out you know he can hands eat whatever the case might be yeah. and uh but and i look at that and i try to teach it to my students to how okay if you're a puncher then you've got to bend you've got to really enhance that but you've got to build on your legs and your grappling and all because i'll tell people there's four state there's four stages of fighting and people say well i don't understand what you're saying well there's punching kicking grappling and then the mm -hmm. other one is weapons you right. gonna have to have all four of these right you can't yep. just say well i don't need weapons i won't never you know if you ever get attacked by a stick or a knife or something if you never train with it you're in trouble you're in trouble you know? yeah
It's like how okay. Bruce always used to say, how do you beat a boxer? You learn how to box. How do you beat a knife fighter? You learn how to use a knife. So yeah. that's the kind of principle I, I look at. And like Larry, Sifu Larry was a grappler. So you learn how to grapple to deal with a grappler. Mm -hmm. And so on, like a boxer and all the rest of them. So they, the, I borrow from stuff from them the way they taught me and I could see how what their favorite thing is or their specialty is. Yeah. Then I knew when I see it in a student, I would try to enhance that teaching methods to then say, okay, if you're a puncher, then this is what you need to do. Right. You still got to build on your other stuff, but you need to focus on your 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 forte, if you want to say it, yeah. like your boxing or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So so with with that um with that varied a uh, background, right? When, when the whole controversy about, you know, the original Jeet Kune Do and the Jeet Kune Do concepts, when all that stuff started being put in the magazines, what were you thinking? Somebody fell on their head. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too political or too, you know, throw too much politics out. Yeah. But, you know, that JKD original and then the JKD concept. My the way I understand it, and the way everybody tells me, Dan and their JKD original is John Fung Gung Fu. Then you build, take that, and you go to JKD concepts to build right. what your personal. You know, it's like Richard always say, sign your name. You sign your name different than anybody, and that's mm -hmm. how your Jika No needs to be. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. So I see people that say, well, you know, Dan diluted it and all that. Well, you have to grow. You take the jump on Kung Fu material and you've got to build off of that to make it your Jeet Kune Do, whatever it is. It might be Kali, might be Thai boxing, or whatever right. the case may be. But you've got to build yeah. off of it. You can't just be stuck in yeah. that mode to not yeah. grow. So, you know, that JKD original and JD concept, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. To me, that people that's saying that, some of them, not all might be out, might be trying to make a dollar and making it sound like they're special and they're the one teaching the real things. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, that's yeah. I've seen it. Unfortunately, I've seen it with some people. Yeah. I ain't gonna mention no names, but yeah, okay, yeah, sir, I've seen so, it. That that idea of, of growth, tell me how that applies to decades of working it with, with the with the uh, with the athletes with the, the football players and what have you. Are you saying the connection that high came around yeah, with football? Because, because, because I would imagine that, that there had to be an evolution because it wasn't always called um, Crow's uh, Sports Science. Oh, no, no. This is, uh, Coach Warren, he's the one that invented the program. Not me. Okay. I did not. Okay. Coach Warren invented it. Now, I've added my own little touch to it, and that's why I call it Crow Sports Science right. Program. That's okay. mine, and I use Coach Ward's program, and he allowed me to do it, and he said it's great. And he comes yeah. by every once in a while, and we, you know, we even work out, and I'll uh -huh. kind of see some of the stuff, and I still work with Randy White and a bunch of them, you know. And I'll, Anyway, but... No, my stuff was involved, revolve around his stuff. Now he's kind of out of it. You know, he don't, he's 85. He don't teach. He don't do anything no more really. But he, he vouches, you know, he puts, he promotes me and all that. So he knows my program is really based off of his. And if you go to my website, that growsportscience.com, you'll see uh -huh. it's plain as day saying that's based on his program. Got Once it. I have my own little, like I say, my own little touch or whatever yeah. you like to say. But yes, that was his. And he, yeah. he did this back in the 70s. He got right. that and he asked, you know, and see oh. Fu Bastillo and all them to come up there and to um, start teaching the Cowboys. And he was there for a right. week or two weeks at a time. And since I lived in Dallas, Coach Ward said, would you mind, since you live here, you could come up you know, all the time, you know, as much as, uh -huh. you know, we can have you up here. I said, yeah, I'd be happy to come up here. Okay. Uh, so I started at the Forest Lane location. I know a lot of people say, well, I don't understand that. 
You know, at the Cowboys Center, there was Valley Ranch. Then it went to the Star. Now it's at the Star. But before Valley Ranch, it was just at a little building over on Forest Lane in Abrams in Dallas. And there was a little wow. hotel right next to it. Now it's a chicken place or, or a Burger King or something. I don't know what it is now. But there was, i tell you a little story. There, um, you know, Coach Allen, that used to coach the Redskins back in the day. That okay. coach, at the same time Coach Landry did. Okay. At the hotel, George, uh, Coach Allen from the Redskins would hire people to come to that hotel and watch the field and watch us train. Ah. Oh. And Coach Landry found out about it. So when he found out about it, he would just rent that whole hotel for the day. <laughs> And that's true. That's honest God truth. That's so funny. I mean, you know, yeah. and um, he would stop. He stopped that. And um, oh, cool. so it's it's funny how yeah. everybody's trying to compete and do their little thing. So hey, you, you do what you got to do. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu background and history. Jiu-jitsu is ninety nine percent of my stuff was from Sifu Hard Cell itself. I did train in judo. He was in. Judo was my very first art okay. I ever studied. And I trained under a guy named Vince Tamura in Dallas. Okay. And I trained with him. I, got, I think it was the yellow belt or blue belt. I think it was yeah. yellow belt. Anyway. And then I went to Taekwondo. I, I didn't, I liked grappling, but I was kind of watching Bruce Lee and all that on the Green Hornet and all mm -hmm. that. And I was looking for the judo chops. And, yeah. and, and since I, Tamura said, there is no such thing, judo chops. So I wanted to punch and kick too. So I went to Taekwondo and I shouldn't have left judo, but I did for for a yeah. while. So okay. basically my grappling is from Dan, of course, you know, Dan does his stuff, but mainly it's from Sifu Hark and, and Sensei Mura. Was my okay. When uh when when the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu hit the market, what it what 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 was your reaction? Well, you know, I put it this way. It was, it's great. Jiu-Jitsu is a wonderful, great art. But, you know, it's like, Sifu Hartzell used to say this. He goes, I did grappling when it wasn't cool. Right. You know, yeah. so, yeah. D d you know, people say, well, do you compare Jiu-Jitsu to Larry's JKD grappling? I like his grappling, JKD grappling a lot better. It's got a lot more different stuff, you know, because... Okay. Sifu Hartsell would take the mod, shoot wrestling, whatever, and Gene LaBelle stuff. Yeah. And ever, 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 anything, for that matter, whatever he could find. So, it, to me, it's more like a multifaceted system, to me. Because judo, mm -hmm. I mean, jujitsu, like I say, is a great art, and I like it. But it, it's, it, it's, I, I don't think it's as expands as much as, like, Sifu Heart Cell stuff, and of course, Sifu Dan and all that. Cause, you know, you watch one of them, you watch them when they grapple, and it was, it looked like a musician playing. Right. They just, you know, it just seemed so good and so smooth and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I get it, you know, I would still get excited. I'm okay. going to ever on for so long, and I watch them, I still get excited. <laughs> like a kid in the candy store. Yeah. You know, all right. So. So the the Wing Chun we know came from uh from Toy. Toy is one, and yeah. I got lucky and trained with Hockey Chung in Wing oh. Chun. I was at a, a seminar for a week down in eighty two, uh -huh. with um uh, Dan was doing a seminar for a week at the California seminars, and it was a week long. Aye. The first yeah. one was Jay Amato, Amato, yeah. not Jay, not Jeff Amato, had nothing to do with Jeff. This guy the was first, named Jay Amato. Jay Amato, yeah. That yeah, was the first yeah. uh, CMAA. You were the second CMAA. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And and then uh, Hawkins Chung came down. William uh -huh. Chung was there. And uh -huh. that's where I got to meet Jesse Glover and got to work with him a little bit later after that. But okay. Hawkins came down and he invited me to his school in California. You know, So I yeah. went up there and I trained a couple times with him. A few times. It was great. It was great. Uh -huh. it, it, he's funny. He's a little guy, but he has so much power. Yeah. And, uh, and William yeah. Chung, 
I got to work a little bit with him, but I'm like I say, when people ask me about my Wing Chun stuff, it's more from Toy, Dan, Francis Fong. I forgot about Francis, Sifu Fong. He would right. get me for this if I yeah. not mention him. But yes, <laughs> Sifu Fong too, I forgot. And yeah. also, I've had a few influences from Wing right. Chun. And did, did, um, did Hawkins Chung and William Chung have um, Bruce Lee stories? Absolutely. Like the yeah. rooftop, the fights on the rooftop and stuff like yeah. that. And, you so, know, and you know, I know you heard the stories about the loser would go over. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And Hawkins would tell us, you know, after, you know, he won the, after Bruce won the cha-cha tournament, you know, for uh -huh. dance. Hawkins was a judge for that, was one of the judges. Oh, okay. And Hawkins said there were some bitter arguments over that. You know, with the contestants and all. So, yeah. you know how that goes. And, but he saying there was always fights and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, and Dan, and you know the old story about how Hawkins, Hawkins even told me that Bruce would put a sign on the door at Yep Man's school saying there was clothes and there wasn't. <laughs> that was, you know, everybody saying, no, right. that was a, a myth. But Hawkins even say that. That yeah, was, that, I mean, Bruce got caught doing that. When you so. hear when you hear people talking about, oh well, Bruce Lee, you know, we don't know if he was any good because he never he never competed, right? You know, it, it's it's funny, you know, like the you know UFC is one tough art. I mean, one tough sport. Yeah, but Bruce, you know, when people ask me that. Do you think Bruce would have been any good? He would have probably, in my opinion, won the championship a lot of years in his weight division. He would have won the gymnastics if he would have went into gymnastics. He was so good at gymnastics. Yeah. Anything he did. But, you know, when it comes to competing, he was teaching people that was champions. Like Chuck mm -hmm. Norris, Joe Lewis, and all them. And people said, well, you know, and they want to twist it. Yeah. And, well, right. they just worked out. Yeah. And I hear a thing now that, um, like Joe Reed, late Joe Sensei Reed, he just passed away. Uh -huh. And they were saying that, or he, you know, I don't know, you know, this is hearsay, but how he was teaching Bruce, you know, Bruce how to kick. Bruce, <laughs> his kicking was way before that. You know, yeah. he's, he's kicking from what Super Dan and Super Richard and everybody tell me. That his his kicking was more of a northern kung fu system base. Right. Now, you know, people say, well, then, you know, that ain't going to mean that he didn't look at probably some of the people kicking and uh -huh. got something out of it uh -huh. to enhance his own kicking. But his art, his kicking sure wasn't from the Chinese, I mean, from the Korean or the Okinawa. Or not. It was more influenced from Thai, I mean, from Chinese. And of course, yeah. he loved Thai boxing. He liked yeah. Thai. Yeah. So, you know, every, like I say, but the bottom line, like you asked, what, by his, you know, would he been any good? I think he would have walked all over him. I think it would have been like a joke. Yeah. And uh, like Dan saying that he could knock you out or, or hurt you bad with just his jab. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so to me, yeah, he would have been a okay. champion for at least a few years. And, all right. So, Still going through the uh, the website. So then the Western box, and that's from Sifu Bastillo. Yeah, mainly, yes, sir. Yeah. Mainly. Okay. I trained with a guy named Callahan that was, uh, he trained with uh, uh, the champion Curtis Coates in the Dallas area. I got okay. I got some boxing from Callahan. I got it from Richard. I got it, okay. from, you know, of course, from Sifu Dan, Sifu Richard, Sifu Hartsell. And Sifu Hartsell was a good boxer. Yeah. And really? People just didn't realize how good his boxing was. Uh, he was really good. Now, I got a lot of good stuff out of, you know, from when I got certified. In, let's see, when was it? 86 or 87 from Larry. See, from okay. I think it's 86 or 87. Yeah. And uh, so something like that. But the boxing was, you know, Western boxing. And all the, you know, the Panatuka and all that is from Dan and, and Seafood Dan, Seafood Richard, and Seafood yeah. Hartsell. So, and all that. Okay. But I did, I tell you, 
soup of Lindsay Lagusa was really special. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a big Bill of Braille Lagusa art fan. Yeah, I just love it. And yeah. one of my favorite things to do is numerado. Really? And yeah, and Dan gave me a, a thing one day, and he drawed it. He said, "This is exactly the way Bill of Braille taught me." He wrote right. the number on the pattern, how you go from one to two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I, if you can go to YouTube and you see, I, I don't put too many videos on YouTube. I'm not a video person. I'm not good at it, which you can tell right now, but my face <laughs> looked like a poison bottle. Not but, so <laughs> but there's a couple things with me and Lindsay Lagusa on YouTube. Okay. Together. And you yeah. see, he's talking about numerado, and he's even doing it. Yeah. And he okay. like, it's smooth. God, it's smooth. Yeah. I know. I, I, so. I've seen the one where he's kind of he's kind of shadow boxing with the single stick. I've seen that and, did, in his backyard. No, I think it's at your. It's it's in a school. Yeah, that was at my school. But on if you see the one that he did. When he demonstrated the 12 angles, it's his own personal video. Him and uh, oh. Dave, I think, put on that. Okay. Anyway, at the end of that, you know, it talks about the Bill Braille 12 angles Yeah. on YouTube. And it yeah. shows the angles and had, you know, one of Lindsay's guys. Well, at the end of it, he's in his backyard talking about run, grasshopper. You know, <laughs> he, he does that. And it's so funny, he goes, he, he texts me and he told me, he goes, did you see what I was wearing? I said, no, I didn't pay attention. He had a white t-shirt and he goes, it's yours. Uh, ah, yeah. So that was kind of neat. So yeah. he was well, really, he was a special guy. He was yeah. really, a, I, I just loved him to death. It just, it bothers me every time I, yeah, I get yeah. emotions sometimes over I, him. I, I, really, I really envy your being able to spend, to spend some time with him because I have a, I have a particular love for the Villabril Largusa system myself, you know, but I don't have, yeah, I don't have the, the in-depth stuff. Okay, one more. Um, okay. The Combative Knife Course. The Uwak Knife Course. The, the, if yeah. people ask me, what does Uwak stand for? Yes. Uwak means crow. And Filipino uh -huh. and Chinese, they both mean the same thing. They spell like that. Okay. A friend of mine say you you know Uwak means crow. I said, well, that's great. I, I like yeah. that name. That's so, cool. Yeah. So I named it after that. And my my stuff, I got the knife, the gun, and I got people like from the FBI and people like that to come in and and pl local police departments and give their input along with my my material that I teach. Yeah. So it's. You know, it's like, it's just a simple sheet that I give, for example, just for a confrontation. You know, if you see, some, you know, like when people going out to the car or in a restaurant, they get into an argument with somebody. Or you right. go to your car and somebody, you know, being some dummy wants to yeah. take your keys or something. I have a sheet that I give people. It's a confrontation, your mindset, your goal, and your aftermath. That's the four, four things that I tell people you have to deal with. When you do have a confrontation with somebody, the confrontation is whatever you do, you know, the confrontation, whatever it is, yeah. argument or whatever. Your mindset is what you're going to do. You know, you're going to walk away from it or you're going to have to fight or whatever. Then you set a goal. Well, how are you going to do it? If you're going to walk away, walk away. And, or if you've got to fight, then you got to, in the aftermath, you've got to deal with the legal part of it or even right. the emotional part of, you know, yeah. getting hurt, or you hurting somebody or something. So, it's a funny thing. I got that principle from Zig Ziglar. Really? If you remember him. Yes. I got, and it, he's a motivational speaker. He was when he was alive. But of course, I had to change a lot of it. Was he <laughs> he didn't do more charts than nothing. But that, that chart I used for the Uwak knife stuff. We have obstacle course that we do with firearms. You know, we use air guns. I don't use no real guns. I don't, I ain't about to, you know, have people take, if people ask me, well, can you teach me how to shoot? I say, no. Right. I, I know people that will teach you how to shoot. That's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an amateur when it comes yeah. to that. I know people that can teach you how to shoot. I teach you how to deal with the stuff and how to maneuver and stuff like that. But the shooting part, no. 
I don't okay. go with it. Bes besides um, the professional athletes from basketball and, and football and what have you, what about fighters? Have you done any training with fight for, for fighters? I've had a few, and they all, you know, it's like a, a fighter is a special breed of person. Uh -huh. Because they going to eliminate everything out of their family in a way. They got to come to that gym eight hours a day and, you know, six hours. And, you know, when I say they got to, I won't say they neglect their family, but they have to commit yes. so much for that. And yeah. a lot of people, I've only had a few. Now, I've had one of my guys, if you you know what the North American Grappling Association is. Yeah, Naga, yeah. Okay. Now, one of my guys came out of the blue, and I started teaching him. He came in second place in it and never done anything. And um, now he's a school teacher. Uh -huh. So full contact people, I, I, I've trained a few, but uh, yeah, I, more grappling people. And okay. stick tournaments. Now, I've had stick tournaments. I've had a few people that did real good. We, had, right. we did a Hall of Fame thing, and one of them, three of my guys came first, second, and third. And wow. So, you know, yeah. so that was kind of good. But, you know, the fighters, I had more, believe not more stick people than I had, you know, any, you know, like, you know, kickboxing and Kick stuff boxers. like that. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so over the, over the, the years, right, what, um, what, what, can you think of like significant changes that you've seen or th that you yourself have experienced in the JKD world? Well, you get these people that saying they know JKD and they did, you know, and then they did. You get these people that say they're certified and they did a weekend seminar somewhere or something uh -huh. or get a, no. you know, and then people say, well, man, that's chicken dough, man. That's not very impressive. But, you know, you get people like that that don't really, I won't say shouldn't be teaching, but they are. And that's okay. But I've seen it watered down so many ways and to where a lot of people get discouraged with it. They say, that's chicken and dough. Mm -hmm. and, and they not really, how to say it, they just ain't trained enough in it to be, yeah. you know. And that's yeah. why, that's the most biggest thing I've seen in the years yeah. that, you know, it's almost, Jeet Kune Do is almost getting to pop up on every corner like Taekwondo was or Judo mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and all that. And it's, you really need to, I myself, I don't certify nobody under four years. Nobody. Right. And it takes at least four years for them to even be considered right. for me. Okay. So, and people, you know, so well, that ain't that long. Well, maybe it ain't, but I give them at least four years minimum. To be eligible. So, so what? What do you? What do you? Um, what do you foresee uh, for the future of of the art of Jeet Kune Do then going forward? You know, for when I see that people, it's like when Sifu Dan, I mean Sifu Larry, Sifu Richard, and all. Now that they're gone, Sifu Dan is basically the only one really left that's teaching publicly. Yeah. After he retires and what he does, he quits teaching. I think it's got to be a, the second generation people like me and you. Yeah. That will have to groom people and get them to do, you know, the, how to say it, the things to, to make it grow and not make it a, a I, I'll, I'm, I'm really big on this, but not making it like a, on every corner. It needs mm -hmm. to be unique because it is a unique arc. Mm -hmm. Art. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, I just see, see that that's what kind of what I see that if they can, I, I, I'm always on that ideal thinking about maybe they should have some kind of, you know, like the state of Texas where I'm at. You know, you to be a, a, a acupuncture or something, you got to go through the state. Well, people laugh at me when I say this. Some people do that. Yeah. They should be some patrol or yeah. some 
something that channels that. You know, uh -huh. it's like back in the day when there was the Bruce Lee uh, group, the foundation yeah. thing, not the one now, but the JKD group that was that back when uh, Dan and Richard and Richard ran it. People, you know, Dan, the JKD Society, Dan didn't want to do it. He didn't want to be the president because it was, you know, it, he was so busy. So yeah. Richard went ahead and started doing it. And it lasted a few years. Now Bruce's foundation, you know, with Miss Lee and and then her daughter, Shannon uh -huh. and all doing it. That helps. That helps. I think that, you know, that helps to kind of, you know, not really monitor people because you, you can't be, I call it, me and Chris was just, me and Chris Kent on one of his posts I was talking about. You can't be the JKD police. There's no sense. <laughs> Right. You know, and yeah. like Seafood Stilo told me, he goes, and Dan, and Seafood Dan told me the same thing. You know, don't worry about that because you'd be, you would, that would be your full time job and start worrying mm -hmm. about, or mm -hmm. not really worrying, but, you know, be concerned about people that's teaching or doing, you know, practice, I mean, teaching, and maybe they shouldn't be teaching. Yeah. And I, I gave that up. Let them worry. Let the students beware. That's all I can say yeah. about, you know, just check well, their credentials. That's yeah, the best thing I can you what I I don't want to be I don't want to be the the JKD police. What I want to do is exactly what I'm doing with people like you, guys who have devoted their entire lives to this art and and philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, you know, and have been have been put in putting it out there. So I want to thank you for for spending this time with me this this evening. We had a a, a bunch of technical hiccups, but. <laughs> And and I'm sorry, like I say, I'm not a technical person. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you know, I wish it could got smoother at first, but I'm glad we got it done. And I'm yeah. very honored for you to ask me to do this. And anytime else you need, you know, you you want to hear me BS, I'd be happy to talk to you. <laughs> it's not BS at all. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you. And have a good day, sir. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. All right. So. That's it. Episode 10 notifications um, uh, in, in advance. But uh, for now, that's it. Thanks for uh, tuning in and spending some time with us. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, uh, signing off from uh, another episode of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. You guys enjoy the rest of the day. Take care.